Believe it's there in the bank, there in deposit, there in Christ Jesus. Believe it's laid up for you. It's yours for you to process. Believe that it's yours and you will have it. If you believe it now, you'll have it. Jesus, you are my King. Jesus, you are my King. Jesus, you are my King. Jesus, you. Missions are now open for the Full Gospel Bible College conducted by Sam P. Chaladurai. Classes begin from 12th January 2015. For details, write to FGBC PO Box 494, Chennai 7. You can also contact us by phone or email. Jesus is trying to teach faith in a holistic manner. He has to emphasize the negative as well as the positive. Without emphasizing, you see, all the teachers do it, you know. If I have to tell you what something is, suppose I say, I'm going to teach about what sin is, I'll probably start with what sin is not. And then go to what sin is, because you have to show the negative and then positive. It helps, you know, to look at both sides. So Jesus is showing what faith is and how faith works. He's got to show the negative and the positive. It works in the negative as well as the positive way. Because we're cursing all the time. It has become part of our nature. It is part of our behavior in the fallen world. It has, this thing has been so infused into our character and into our language. So Jesus says... If you want to live by faith, you know, learn to speak only what God says. Jesus said, I speak only what my father speaks and uh, I do only what the father says. That's why he was so powerful. He says, learn that. So he was trying to show the negative. And cursing one tree is not going to cause big damage. Sorry, dear tree lovers. <laughs> there are people out there in the world that say, have you hugged your tree today? You know, that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> But, but, you know, I love trees also. I wouldn't want to cut up any tree at all. And I wouldn't want to curse a tree, really. You know, and if you did cut up one thing, you know, you'd want to plant ten more to replace that, you know, which would be good. I believe all that. But a tree is a tree. You can sacrifice one tree to teach big teaching on faith. That's the whole point there. 
Jesus, thank God, he cursed the fig tree. With the, otherwise, I'd be cursing every day. And something will be dying every day in my life. And then only I'll find out, my God, my words are killing this stuff, you know. Some people are looking at me and saying, well, you don't curse, brother. Read James chapter 3, I think verse 10, it says, out of the same mouth comes cursing and blessing. How is it, it says? How do Christians have, out of the same mouth, blessing and cursing coming? Sometimes it's cursing, sometimes it's blessing. Why? Because people don't know that cursing will work. <laughs> we believe blessing will work. Right? That's why even irreligious people, not even religious, they drop their wife in church in India, go out, take care of their business, come back to pick up the wife after the sermon is over. And they find the preacher getting up there to give the benediction and they open the door and stick their head in, you know. <laughs> Just to get the benediction, good words on their head because they believe in the blessing. Blessing, he's pronouncing blessing, they want to get it, you know. We believe in blessing, we just don't believe in cursing. We believe in blessing, we believe, we believe that somebody will just come and bless our house, bless our car, bless our business, bless our everything. We believe blessing, but every day we are cursing the business, every day we are cursing the salary, every day we are cursing the work of our hands. We don't think it's cursing at all. Some people say, where did I curse? Well, when you bring the salary home and you say, here, I don't know how long it'll come. I don't know, I don't see how six of us can eat out of this for many days. Now you tell me what difference there is between saying, see how long six people can eat out of this. I don't think it's enough at all. And saying, let no one eat fruit of you hereafter. Think deeply now. Plus, minus, add, deduct. Multiply, <laughs> do your mathematics. I will tell you there is nothing different. <laughs> nothing much different. Few words here and there. It's the same thing. Translates basically into the same thing. Monday morning you get up and say, I hate this work. I hate to look at that boss of mine, that stupid face. <laughs> and then soon you don't have that work. No wonder, you hated it, you cursed it, it became cursed, dried, withered away, you see. See, we don't look at these things as cursing. That is why I believe Jesus said, let's sacrifice one tree today. So forever this will be preached, not only in AFT in Chennai, but all over the world, that this fig tree that was cursed, will be put up before people and the lesson will be preached that when you open your mouth and speak, remember what you say is what you will get. That's the whole lesson. That's what it amounts to basically. So I say to you, this is not about the temple. How can this be about the temple? If it was about the temple, he would have said, when he said the fig tree is cursed, he said, remember that's what is going to happen to that temple. But let's do the next verse, 23. See, I'm quoting verses. Don't think I'm just saying something. This is Sam's philosophy, you know. <laughs> Have faith of God is verse 22. Now verse 23. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but believes that those things that he saith will come to pass, he shall have whatever he says. Now take it apart quickly. Whosoever. Now what does this whosoever has to do with the temple cursing? If Jesus is predicting the cursing of the temple and doing away with the temple, the, how the temple will be cursed and completely done away with, which, which is what happened, you know, later on in just a few years. If Jesus was predicting that, fine. If you say that's what it means, I'm ready to accept it. But what does verse 23 have to do with that? And what does verse 22 has to do with that? What does fig tree cursing has to do with verse 23? Because after cursing, after Peter said, the tree you cursed has withered away, in response, Jesus says, have faith in God. And that response continues by saying, not only have faith in God, in other words, have my kind of faith, 
And then he explains his kind of faith. He says, whoever says to this mountain, be thou removed. In other words, he says, any man made in the image and likeness of God. Remember when God made man, the Bible says, let us make man in our image and in our likeness and let them have dominion. Actually, their translation must go, they say, so that they may have dominion. Verse 26, be fruitful, multiply, replenish. All that is done away with in verse 26. Straight away goes to dominion, showing the, showing the importance of the idea of dominion for man. Let's make man in our image and likeness. Let them have dominion or so that they may have dominion. He has made everything. He wants somebody to have dominion over everything. That's why God made man. It's a plain statement of the Bible. And Jesus is simply teaching on the basis of that. Whoever says to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in. See, in the fallen world, we could never comprehend that man was made indeed like that. We just can't believe that, you know, man was given dominion. We just don't understand dominion because we have never seen dominion. But that's why the Gospels are important. The life of Jesus is important because in Jesus you see dominion. Dominion over the sea, the wind and the wave and the tree and the mountain and everything. Dominion. He shows what man has. Man has dominion. This would be a good point, a good, a good uh, place to insert for Jesus. Look, Peter, I've cursed the fig tree. Disciples, listen. And it got cursed. This is really about the temple. Don't ever try to go and practice this on other things. It won't work for you. He could have made that point. For one of these soft drinks, you know, a truckload of soft drinks are going, bottles are going. One guy will jump into it, take a, open a bottle and drink out of it. And another guy from the car, he'll be saying, give me one and he'll just throw another one to the guy, and it's all happening while going at about 80, 90 miles an hour speed, you know. And that guy catch a, catches a hold of it, and he drinks it, and he throws it to another guy on a bike or something like that, you know. I forget the exact sequence. But anyway, there's all kinds of circus in just about 30 seconds, you know. And that guy also drinks, and while the whole thing is going on, there is a small line underneath, it says, Please do not try it at home. This is done by stunt people, cinema stunt people, experts. Because they know that some fool is going to take this up and say, I'll take this car and I'll throw it from here to your bike. You catch it. We will go and put on a road show, you know, <laughs> and kill a few people on the way, you know. So please don't do it at home because this is done by stunt specialists. Now, Jesus should have said, this is the Son of God, man. This works for me, not for you. I'm cursing the temple, not the fig tree. Don't try it on anything. He could have said that. In fact, he says exactly the opposite. He says, not just this tree. Whoever will say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart, but believes that whatever he says will come to pass. He shall have whatever he says. Very difficult to understand for us who live in fallen world. We've settled for a less than a share of our own. <laughs> we have settled for, well, it's all right if I'm dominated. If it's all right if I don't have any power. After all, in this society, we don't, we'll wait till we get to heaven, you know. And the church also tells us, wait till you get to heaven. We're walking on gold and you know, everything will be under your feet and all that business, you know. And we have decided nothing works here for us. We just be as we are. That's why it's, this teaching is difficult. That's why they avoid this also. You go read anywhere where they're writing about Mark 11, 23, any commentary, anything, you know, you read. 23, when they come, they will gloss over it. Just, you, you know that these very highly qualified people simply don't want to deal with it because they have to answer these things. So they'll never explain whosoever. Eh? This mountain they will explain. They say in Jerusalem there was a Mount of Olive. There's only one thing they'll say. But they will never say anything else. 
they will never explain who server then they will say they will never say anything about do not doubt in your heart but believe see this is all about individual faith see even those that believe that this is about faith but this is about the gift of faith a very special kind of faith they are making a mistake because if it's about the gift of faith i believe in the spiritual gifts and the gift of faith and all of that but this is not about the gift of faith if it was about the gift of faith it will be only for certain people at a certain particular time to do a particular task a gift is given but this is talking about this is for uh, this is for everybody this has universal application it looks like you know he says whoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed he will have whatever he says so this is not about the gift of faith also so they will not deal with not only whoever or whosoever they will also not deal with um shall not doubt but believe this is about an individual not doubting and believing what does that have to do with the temple if he wants to curse let him curse the temple why should he say don't doubt but believe and why it has nothing to do with me you are cursing the temple you curse it it has nothing to do but this verse clearly shows that it's not that at all shall not doubt but believe that those things that he saith will come to pass another thing they miss here is the word say saith saith comes three times whosoever shall say one to this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but believes that whatever he saith number 2 shall come to pass he shall have whatever he says says has mentioned three times in one verse when you have something mentioned that many times in one verse you better check it out because that's that's very important there you know what is it all about see that's why jesus cursed the fig tree he is saying whatever you say you're going to have i'll show you even if you curse the fig tree you'll have it if you speak curse words you will have it he says for whatever he says he will have so this is about an individual's faith a faith that every believer can use this is about the law of faith which is applicable to anybody and everybody as a believer amen verse 24 therefore i say to you whatever things you ask see this is connected we'll continue next week with this Therefore after doing all this and saying all this and teaching about faith he says therefore i say to you whatever things you ask when you pray King James i think has whatever things you desire when you pray because asking and desire is the same what do you ask whatever you desire is what you ask right whatever you desire when you pray so prayer is asking or prayer is desires expressed what your desire is you express prayer is not a time of giving complaints to god heaven is not a police station god is not a police officer god can fix your problems so when you come before heaven before god you always speak what you desire to have not what the problem you're having but what you like to have because heaven already knows what the problem is heaven always wants to know what do you want because they can do what you want amen? amen so whatever things you desire when you pray believe that you receive them and you'll have them let me just say this believe that you receive them an unusual language is here it should have said believe that you received them or believe that you will receive them all those will be right what is this believe that you receive them not this way or that way why leave it in the middle believe that you receive them why not say believe that you received them or believe that you will receive them and then you will have them the thing is because they are unable to come up with the right kind of expression for this and many translations have now come up with this with, uh, with this uh, translation this is believe that you have received them and you shall have them how can you say without receiving you believe that you have received them how can that be possible you haven't received anything you will have it that means you will receive it but you believe that you have received it how can you believe that you have received it when you haven't received it and you will receive it it can it can happen you know why because every blessing is already stored up for us in jesus christ 
already there. It's already done and finished. It's already stored up for us in Jesus Christ. So what it is saying is, whatever you desire when you pray, believe that it's yours. One translation says exactly like that. Believe that it's yours. Believe it's there in the bank, there in deposit, there in Christ Jesus. Believe it's laid up for you. It's yours for you to process. Believe that it's yours and you will have it. If you believe it now, you'll have it. That's the way prayer works. That's the way faith works. This is the way you take this lesson of faith and apply it to prayer. And we'll apply it fully to prayer next week. But I'll tell you this. The devil doesn't want us to understand faith. It doesn't want us to apply faith in prayer. The devil doesn't want us to possess what God has prepared. Everything is prepared. Whatever you're asking and praying and wanting is already done and kept there. Faith takes. I will show you that. Faith takes. A lot of people have a faith that waits, but faith must take. Faith must take. There is an enemy, the devil, who hates God, doesn't want any glory to belong to God. You are made for God's glory. So when you have good things happening in your life, when you have blessings, when you overcome your difficulties and problems and win in life, it's glory to God. And he hates that. He does not. He wants you to be defeated. He wants you to fall down. He wants you to, he wants you, to uh, you know, become useless. Because that way God will not get any glory. That's, that's, the, that's the whole idea there. But God is on your side. He wants you to win. He wants you to learn this. He wants you to possess every blessing that he has already provided. Amen? Amen. I always say if somebody has put 100 crores, that's like $20 million in the bank, you have to know where it is, which account number, right? Let me develop that little further. <laughs> Suppose you found out which account number, where it is, which bank. You now you know the details. You know one thing I can tell you, you cannot get it out that easy. You know why? One broker will be calling you. He will say, I will process the whole thing, give me 5%. Yeah. Then you will have to have an accountant because you owe some money to the government and they are waiting to get their share. And they will tell you how many, but that will work out to some 30, 40%, you know. After everybody gets through the percentage, I don't know how much you'll have left. <laughs> you know, I don't think you'll get even half of what that 100 crores is. At least these people will leave you half or a little better. But the devil doesn't want to leave you anything. <laughs> he wants to wipe out everything, doesn't want you to possess anything. And your intention to, is to possess everything. Amen. Possess everything. <laughs> Amen? Attention all pastors, Sam P. Chaladurai invites you to a pastor seminar at AFT Chennai on the 21st, 22nd and 23rd of January 2015 every day from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Please note that all messages will be in Tamil only. Prior registration with a fee of rupees 600 is required. You can register online at www.refsam.org or you can call us at the numbers on the screen. We look forward to seeing you there.
can speak and who walks God says us to win yeah thanks be to God who walks God says us to try your fears name thanks clap our hands and say thanks be to You're the one. 